so, so bored. So I wish I had something to do. <sighs> Thanks for letting me sleep in, kids. If you make a mess in the kitchen, please let me know so I can clean it up. Raising kids is so easy. I just love driving around all day. Oh, I never have to repeat myself. They always listen so carefully. Oh, look. An empty box of cereal. Love it. Just wipe it on your sleeve. It's pretty cold, but you don't need a coat. Oh, you don't have to push in your chair. Don't make your bed. You're just gonna sleep in it again later. I think I'll skip the coffee today. Well, the things moms never say, right? Yeah. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, welcome to Cross Point Church. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. Let's give our moms all a great big hand. Can we do that? Yeah. Yeah. Moms, we love you. This is your special day. And none of us would be here without you. So uh, we are eternally grateful. We're eternally grateful. Well, I just want to welcome all of you in this room, and we see some of you kids that have come in with your moms and honored them, and we want to welcome you as well, some from out of town, I see that, and uh, we want to welcome everybody online that's watching and listening this morning, and I, I just want to say a little apology to those that are online. Uh, I know we had some sound complications last week. I pray that we've got them corrected this morning, and we're going to very closely monitor this going forward, and so anyway, we love you. We're glad you're joining with us as, as well, and happy Mother's Day to all of you that are watching online as well. I want to uh, just welcome our guest, your first time uh, visitor here with us. We, we're so honored you're here. You're looking for a church home? We'd, uh, come join us. We'd be glad to have you a part of us. Uh, you're listening online. Uh, there's a little place on the contact page. Just drop us an email. Let us know you're listening, a part of us for the first time. If you're in this room, there's a connection card in the chair in front of you. You can fill that out and drop that in the offering a little bit later, or you can drop it in the connection box out at the Welcome Center. There's a place for prayer requests there. We believe in prayer around here. Uh, and if you have a prayer request, you can put it right on that connection card, and we'd just be honored to pray for you. Um, I want to uh, just uh, mention we have had just a wonderful morning. Uh, uh, did a few of you get a pictures taken this morning? Did they turn out pretty good? I, I saw some of them. They looked really nice. You all look great. Um, they will, I believe, be around to take a few last pictures afterwards. Um, and if you did not pick up your pictures, uh, you can pick them up at the Welcome Center on your way out. And I want to thank uh, Josh and Hannah and Kayla. Can we just give, I see Hannah sticking her head in the back. Can we just give them a hand for uh, helping us out? Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. We have a gift for every mom at the end of service as you're leaving, and uh, we didn't want to ask one of the moms to do this, but Jason will be out there with his smiling face and hand out a bag to every mom that's uh, uh, here, so you can just grab that in a special gift. Thank you, Jan, for preparing that and making it special for every mom uh, as well. 
If you want to prepare your morning tithes and offering, if you'll do that now, thank you for your faithfulness in giving to the Lord. You can see the ways to give uh, up on your screen, offering envelope. Uh, those that are watching online, you can text to give as well, and you can follow the instructions there. Thank you for your faithfulness uh, in giving. And in speaking uh, of that, I want to just uh, mention that something very special the next two weeks, um, and uh, it is our annual missions emphasis and uh, that'll be next Sunday the 16th and then the 23rd. Uh, next Sunday, we're gonna have a special guest with us, Vashon Johnson. They're starting a teen challenge here in the Green Bay area, in the, this Northeast Wisconsin area, and he's gonna share his story about being delivered from drug addiction, and if, if you know of somebody in your family, your extended friends, that is struggling with some sort of an addiction, uh, bring them next Sunday morning. They'll be encouraged by the testimony of, of just uh, God's delivering and, and strengthening power. You're going to learn more about the Teen Challenge that is going to be developed in this area, uh, and as well as Chad's going to speak to us uh, next Sunday morning and challenge us in the area of missions. And so these are two uh, very important and, and great Sundays. The following Sunday, Tom and Joanne Doyle uh, are going to be with us. And they, he's a prolific author. Um, he has wrote his books sell in the thousands. They've been guest with us. The only reason they come to Green Bay, I'll tell you, they, church, they speak in large churches all over the country. Here's the only reason they'll come to our church, because he's a big Packer fan. <laughs> and I, tw I, I twisted his arm and reached out to him, and he says, I'll come. Um, I, they've written numbers of books. In fact, I grabbed, uh, uh, they do a lot of work in the Mideast. In fact, sometimes I'll text uh, Tom and he, he'll text me back from Saudi Arabia or Cyprus or someplace like that. God has used them tremendously to see miracles, God's miracle working power in and amongst uh, Muslim people and them turning their lives to Jesus. And... Um, uh, they just love the Lord. They, you're gonna be inspired, you're gonna be encouraged. It's gonna be a highlight service uh, of our year. Now, here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to check out and say, well, we're gonna look at, look at missions, we're gonna look around the world. How many of you know in our culture right now with everything's going around, how many of you know it's really good for us right now to look at the rest of the world? Okay, not just look at ourselves, not come to church just for me. So I, I'm, I'm asking in these next two weeks, there are highest attended services. They're, the most of us are there. When we're looking beyond ourselves, you're gonna be encouraged and challenged. One of their, their books that, uh, that Joanne and Tom wrote together uh, called Women at Risk about the stories of Muslim women that are beaten by their husbands. They are, they're tormented and tortured and how when Jesus gets hold of their life, their life totally changes to love. It's just, I read one of the stories last, I, I, gotta, I gotta tell you this. And we're gonna actually give out their book, next, uh, one book next Sunday to every family. I was what, reading it yesterday and I was sobbing at the end. <laughs> Sue come in and I read the first chapter, I was sobbing. And, uh, and I don't do that all the time. And so Sue comes in, she goes, how was that first? I said, I was sobbing at the end of it. And uh, so we're gonna have two incredible weeks the next two Sundays. I wanna invite you to be a part of our mission. Chad, you'll enjoy listening to him next Sunday morning as he challenges us uh, as to think outside the box, to think around the world, and he's gonna challenge us as well. Um, okay, uh, our chapter up reading this week is Acts uh, chapter one through five, and um, uh, I encourage you to be a part of God's word, reading God's word one chapter a day for five days. We encourage you to be a part of that. Ushers, come forward and wait upon us for our morning tithes and offerings. Nate, I'm gonna give you the mic here. Can you uh, pray for our offering and pray for um, my message as well, okay? Lord, we just thank you for the honor of being in your house. Yeah. We thank you for the moms in this room and the moms who are not here that are also yeah. represented. And we just pray you bless them richly today and let them know how loved and appreciated they are. Lord, we also pray that you would take this offering, you would bless it, and you would meet the needs of the church and let us, in turn, bless others around the world and locally with that as well. And Lord, we just pray that you would, you would anoint Pastor and his message this morning and it would be your words delivered through him and that you would receive it. We would receive that. Every heart would listen and be open to the message that he has. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Lord bless you as you give. This morning, I'm going to conclude a series called Pieces of My Heart and uh, that we have been working on, Arnie and Chad and I, for the last few weeks. And um, turn your Bibles, if you would, to Luke chapter 1 this morning. Luke chapter 1. Uh, 
we can all think of in our life and we can get concerned if we, if we share our true feelings. We, we don't like bad surprises. In fact, the truth is if we sh- were to share our feelings, we sometimes brace ourselves and we are a little concerned of like if, if, if we get a bad negative spin on life, oh, what's gonna happen next? We're like brace, oh, what bad surprise is gonna come? Don't raise your hand, but have you ever been there? And, and we can get this mindset. But let's flip that this morning and let me ask this question. Is it possible that God could be bringing some good surprises your way? And I want to tell you that's the very truth and what I want you to think about this morning is that God cannot just, you're not just going to have to face bad surprises, but God can be formulating some good surprises. I, I don't know if you heard this story in the last couple of weeks, but there was a woman that was on a plane and she was going from uh, Salt Lake City, Utah to Honolulu, Hawaii, and she was flying, Arnie and Jan's favorite place, Salt Lake, and um, she's flying there on the plane and all of a sudden she goes into labor. And maybe you saw this story in the news. And so they deliver the baby in the aisle of an airplane. That's probably not the most comfortable place to have a baby. Uh, There happened to be a gynecologist on the flight and a couple of nurses, and they took care of her marvelously. She lands in Honolulu. And the the amazing part of the story is that she told everybody, she said, I didn't even know that I was pregnant. It was, this was a total surprise. What good surprises might be in the works for you today. What good surprises. I want you to know that we serve a God who specializes in the impossible and the improbable for good as well. So on this Mother's Day, I was praying about this morning and what to speak about. And the Holy Spirit put on on my heart the story of two mothers, Mary and Elizabeth. Both had surprise pregnancies. And so that's gonna be the focus of our text this morning and are looking at God's word and I, I, I grant you this is not Christmas I'm not confused I know that this is Mother's Day but I couldn't think of a better mother to talk about than Mary or Elizabeth this morning so let's look our text at Luke chapter 1 and the title of my message this morning is the things that angels say the things that angels say looking at our book at our Bible Luke chapter 1 looking at verse 26, and we're going to read a few verses. Follow along with me. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph uh, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with, with you. Blessed are you among women. Now, I wanted to say for all of you, I know this was speaking to Mary, but I want to tell you, you and the, you women in this room are blessed by God. You're a blessing to all of us. You're blessed of the Lord. Verse 29, it says, when she saw him, she was troubled at the saying and considered what man, that she saw the angel. Uh, the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Today, in the culture that we're living, the news cycles that we're watching, can we say that phrase together right now to be an encouragement to all of us? All of, us? of his kingdom there will be no end. Repeat it after me. Of his kingdom there will be no end. Verse 34, then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I don't know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her, uh, for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So we think of this idea of angels. We don't talk about it or think about it a lot. But the truth is, God's angels are watching over us. I I think of during this pandemic that we have been facing, and we've been meeting together in uh, in this sanctuary since May together. 
And I have, there's been a prayer that I have prayed every Sunday or every Saturday before our worshiping together. And uh, it's this. I've been praying Psalm 91 over us. That God will give his what? His angels charge over us to guard us in all of our ways. If you look at the verse before that in the scripture, it says that no plague shall touch you. And you know what, God, now we've had a few people in our church that have gotten COVID, but not here. They've gotten it at work or other places. And God has held up that prayer because it's true that his, his, he'll give his angels charge over us. I, I, another picture that we don't think about God's angels, so they're there to guard us, but they're actually there, the scripture says, to deliver us. I, I was um, a dear family in our church, Ashish and Prathiba. We call her Rebecca. They have two boys, Joel and David. And they're not here this morning. They're on a flight back from Denver. And um, uh, they're dear people from, they, they grew up in India, lived in India, moved here about three years ago, and he's an IT person uh, for the Schneider Company. And they're precious in our lives because it was through them that God used to bring our son-in-law our way, Kenneth. And these people are dear, part of our congregation, and, and so we love them. And, and they were facing a situation where uh, Ashish's dad has cancer and he's in India. And uh, so Ashish and Rebecca had to make a decision. Well, can I go see him? I haven't, he hasn't been back in India for three years and he wanted to go there. And so he made arrangements to travel with he and Prathiba and the boys to go back and see his dad and if he was gonna, not, not, they not knowing exactly how long he was gonna live. So they had to make arrangements, but in there making arrangements because of COVID and everything, they had to give up their apartment here in De Pere. And they had to let it go at the end of April. And they, were, they made arrangements to put their car over at Arlene's, wherever I saw Arlene here somewhere, and she has a, a garage, and they were gonna store their car at, uh, and, 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 and as she said to me, she says, Pastor, she says, if we can't come home, can you sell our car for us? Because they didn't know if they were gonna be let back into the country. He didn't know he was gonna lose his job. They were just in, a, in this heart thing. They wanted to see his dad, but yet, they had this encompassing problems around them. So it came to a week before they were ready to leave. This was a couple of weeks ago, and Ashishi wanted to come in and talk to me. And, and so he comes in, and he tells me their situation, and, and he says, Pastor, he says, he says, they're starting to shut down the travel to India. He says, I don't even think we can go home. He says, on Friday, we have to give up our home. He said, we can't, we're not gonna have a place to live. I said, Ashish, I haven't talked to Sue but you can just come, you and, uh, you and Prathiba and the boys can come live with us for a little temporary period of time if you need to. You're not gonna go stay in a hotel. You're not gonna uh, be stuck. We're gonna take care of you. And um, meanwhile, I proceeded, I, I got done with him and, and I proceeded to that next Monday morning I called and a, a couple people, Janet, the Cup of Joy, they have apartments and she didn't have anything available. I, I called a, another place that I knew that we had, uh, purchased a, a apartment for a homeless person and I called that contact and he says I think we've got something available and, and I, we went over there Ashish and I went over there and a week ago Monday or two weeks ago Monday and and uh, we in, the apartment was not very nice it, it was a dive in all actuality in fact he took Prathiba back there and they, they said to me later they said it was worse than we ever lived in India I didn't know that we could have something in Green Bay that's that bad but I found it for them so the moral of the story is don't don't ask me to find you an apartment okay that's the moral of the story and so um, it was bad, so I knew it was bad. And so I'm, I'm, I'm praying, this is Monday night, and I'm ready to text or email all of you to say, do you any of you know of an apartment? Do you know of a house, any place they could move to? And I was about ready to type on the computer, and, and, and Sue said to me, how about Dave and Laura? They have a condo in Appleton. If it's not full, maybe they could stay there. And I said, great idea. And Dave, uh, Laura was a, a music minister of music for me in two churches and my admin in a couple of churches. And, and uh, Dave and Laura are just dear friends, are godly people. And, and so I called Dave and Laura and, and uh, they were at their place up in Tomahawk. And, and I said, hey, could, is your condo available? Could I explain the situation? And they knew of them. And, 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 and he said, that'd be fine. I said, do you need to talk to Laura? He said, no, she's sitting across the table from me shaking her head yes. And he says, everything that we own is God's. And when these things come up, it's we make them available. And I, and I said, this has to happen like right away. They said, we'll drive down, we'll, we can meet you there tomorrow night with Ashish and Prathiba. And we made the arrangements. Tuesday morning I get a call and, uh, and Ashish says to me, Pastor, I don't know what to do. Now my mom has COVID. I, we're totally confused. And he says, I surrendered my tickets to India this morning and I don't know what to do. 
He said, but I think we got to go down and see the condo. And uh, so we go down and uh, that Tuesday, Tuesday evening and we see the condo. They look at it. And, and, and it's so beautiful. They said, yes, we'll take it. Thank God that you've supplied it. And we're standing around in a circle and we're praying for his mom, Zarina, in India. And Dave and Laura and Sue and I and their kids and we just grabbed hands in the, in the condo. And Laura made this comment. She said, God gives his angels and causes them to encamp around those who love him. Amen. And here's the scripture. It says this in Psalm 34, seven. Look at this. It's up on the screen, I think. There it is. And the angel of the Lord encamps all around. Can everybody say all around together? All around those who fear him. And what does it say here? He delivers them. And here's the beautiful part of this story. That stuck with me. In that story, the place that we were standing in the condo, it was not just better than the dive that I found them. It was better and it was fully furnished, better than the apartment that they just moved out of and God was taking care of them at half the cost. How many of you know that God can surprise us with good things in the midst of everything? Dave and Laura, they texted me that night and they later shared, and I later shared it with Ashish and Prathiba and they quote in their text back to me, Thanks for letting us be a part of the Udom's miracle. That's their last name. Udom's miracle. God is so good. Good surprises that he sends our way. So three things angels say I want to talk about here uh, for a few moments to mothers. But these truths really apply to all of us. And what I've done from our text is because some of these in Luke 1 here are specific to Mary. But there's principles within them that apply biblically to all of us. And I want to draw those conclusions for a few moments. And I, I want to give one clarification before I get into these. I, I recognize in the things I'm going to talk about right now that not every mother has been perfect. There's been mothers that have fallen short. I get that. So if you're here and your mom didn't live up to some of the things I'm going to talk about, you know what? Thank God for your mother because you would not be in this planet without your mother. And let God heal your broken heart and take the pain of what you've dealt with and you be a blessing to those that you have influence or you might be a mom for and you can change the scenario and you can change the scene. God can redeem the situation in your life. Number one, the Lord is with you. A true characteristic of a, of a good, healthy mother is a mother that is with you. You get these pro athletes that are on, uh, you ever see them interviewed after a football, after baseball or basketball, and they get on, somebody puts a cam camera in front of their nose, and what do they do? Hi, Mom. And what are they saying? And some of them come out of rough inner city ghetto situations and terrible situations. And why did they do that? Because their mother was there for them. Dad was off running shenanigans or doing whatever he was doing, but moms are there for us for the most part. With this story, Jesus comes on the scene. He was what? Emmanuel, God with us. God is displayed in his multiple forms. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, who became Emmanuel with us. The Holy Spirit, he sends his angels to help and aid in our life. In fact, I was reading a news article this week in a major news publication, and it was, this is an amazing, this is a true story that I read in, in a national news publication this week. The title, and I'm saying in quotes, Idaho school shooting, colon, teacher who disarmed student felt like an angel was guiding her, father says, end quote. That was the headline in a national news article. There's something to this. So look at verse 35 in your text. It says, And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. There's not only the angels that are watching over us and protecting and delivering, but there's the Holy Spirit that will overshadow us and that can protect us and the highest that surrounds us. I, I was thinking about this, and, and I've got to be careful in the comparison here. But I began to think about what the Bible teaches us, the qualities of the Holy Spirit, and then I began to think about the qualities of a mother. 
I didn't make this up. I'm just reporting what the Bible says. But listen to this. And if you were to look at the characteristics, and most of these the Apostle John records in the book of John or Luke records in his writing or the book of Acts, the characteristics and nature of the Holy Spirit. Listen to some of them as I list them and see if this resonates with you. It says of the Holy Spirit in John chapter 14 that the Holy Spirit will be what? With you. Just like that mother. Um, The Holy Spirit is a comforter. The Holy Spirit is a counselor. Think right now as I'm speaking Holy Spirit, think mother. You following? Holy Spirit is a teacher. Isn't that where mom is? Holy Spirit is powerful. We learn in the scripture that the Holy Spirit brings power. You, you, you think right now, moms, have you seen in the news recently? There's a couple moms that, I mean, if you, if you get a, a little, you mess with little bear cubs and that mama bear's around, you better get out of the way. And, and you, I don't need to ask you to raise your hands, but how many of you got in some dangerous situation in your life and, oh, mama bear came and she protected you and took care of you and watched out for you and she was gonna knuckle anybody else that got near you? One of those deals. Um, but I, I think there's a couple of moms in the news in the last couple of weeks. I mean, you see them, the moms are going in there, take these masks off our kids, get them off. And I mean, they are just irate. They're protecting their kids and they're just at it. But the idea of this Holy Spirit is powerful. A mom is powerful. The Holy Spirit gives peace. Aren't you glad for the peace that our moms give? The Holy Spirit's a guide, it says in John 16. Our moms haven't they guided us? You want to know about the Holy Spirit, look at your mother. I, I, I think of our kids when I think of guide. I, we have two boys and two girls, and they're from 23 to 32. And our two boys, Taylor is our oldest son, lives in Minneapolis, and, and when he was younger, he, he, he was self-taught. He taught himself to play the guitar. He taught himself to play drums, and, and, and we discovered he was never much of a singer, but he had a, an incredible ear for listening. And, um, and so we, we could, he, just, he could pick up and he just I mean, picked up the guitar and started playing. One day he comes down to his bedroom and says, Dad, Mom, listen to this. I go, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't sing on key. I can't, play, I can't play, what do you call that? Mary had a little lamb. I can't do it, okay? And so, and then all of a sudden, he's in his high school years. He takes the movie Batman and he knocks the sound out of it, and then he recorded with his own voice all the characters in the movie Batman, and he spliced it all together and made it. I go, what's, what's up with this kid? <laughs> Sue saw that in him, and she enrolled him at NWTC in the audio engineering course, and he then be- has his own music studio called Underscore, Underscore Audio in, in Minneapolis, and he now does commercials. He does the mastering of the c- commercials for Best Buy, for uh, 3M, for Polaris, for Shield Sports. It's in Appleton, and he masters those sounds b- b- because he's got this ear. But Sue, my wife, his mother, knew how to guide him. Our son Wesley is uh, uh, he, he, in, in the basement of our house, he, he could put together wood pieces and metal and he could make some contraption and make it go with rubber bands and whatever he would do. And Sue saw it and she says, that boy needs to get in the manufacturing engineering courses at NWTC and then graduated from Stout and he now works for Plexus as a manufacturing engineer. Because my point being is, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. The mother is a guide. The Holy Spirit is a guide. If you want to understand about God, you're going to understand who the Holy Spirit is, you're gonna understand it through your mother. And that's the whole scenario here in Luke 1, that the Holy Spirit is there to overshadow, to guide, to lead, to, to take care of. And now I want to show you the verses, in, in verse 28 here, look at this. It says, and having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice, highly favored one, and here's the statement, you need to underline it in your Bible. This is the universal truth out of this passage specifically for Mary, but this is for you. It says here, the Lord is with you. His angels are watching over you. His Holy Spirit is with you. He's with you. That's everybody in this room, man, women, no matter young or old, the Lord is with you today. Moms, just like you've been there for us, moms this morning and those listening online, I want you to know that he's with you today. You've been there for us. He's with you today. 
All of, all, of us, all of us in this room, we can be reassured the Lord is with you. He has not left you. He has not abandoned you. And what does the scripture say in more than one place? The Lord says this, I will never. Everybody say never together. Never. And say never, 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 never. He says, I will never leave you and I will never abandon you. You ever have those days you think, God, where are you? God, I don't know where you're at. But I want you to be assured this morning on this Mother's Day, he says, I will never leave you. The Lord is with you. Number two this morning, do not be afraid. Where does a young child run when they're afraid? They run to their mom. Oh yeah, every once in a while, dads, they'll run to you. But a lot of times to mom. Moms have a way of protecting and buffering us from fear and protecting us. Uh, I, I'm not going to spend a long time on this message about don't be afraid at this point. Chad spoke a message a couple, three weeks ago about do not be afraid. Pastor Arnie spoke a great message on no weapon formed against us are going to prosper. It was a great message. You can go back and listen to that online. And then Chad followed that up with a message about do not be afraid or what are we afraid of. Go back and listen to those messages and they will help you in dealing with this idea of fear. I was listening to a woman that was in her 90s a few weeks ago. And, and I, I like listening to some of our people that have a little age under their belt. They're oftentimes not going to speak unless they're asked to speak, but they have a lot to say. And, um, and so I was listening to this lady. She was in her 90s, and she well, sharp mind. And she said this. She said, to live in guilt is to live in the past. To live in worry is to live in the future. She challenged us to live in the now because God's given us this moment. See, anxiety and, and worry are just, they're, they're, they're tentacles of fear. And they cause us to work, live in the future where God doesn't want us to live. God's given us today. Didn't Jesus teach that in the Sermon on the Mount? Why worry about tomorrow? He's given you today. Tomorrow's going to take care of itself. Listen to the, the advice of that woman in her 90s. So then, if you want to draw another line under a phrase in your scripture, look at verse 30 in your scripture. It says in verse 3, then the angel said to her, these are the things that the angel say, do not be afraid. I didn't say that. God's word said that. The angel said that to Mary. Can I tell you what? Here's what we got to think of. We can fear all kinds of crazy stuff happening to us, but the issue is we can fear good surprises. Mary here was tempted to fear a good surprise in being the mother of Jesus. It was not a bad surprise. It was a good surprise. We can fear good surprises. God has good things our way. Don't fear good surprises that God might have in the works for you. Can anybody say amen to that? Number three and last this morning is this. For with God, nothing will be impossible. If you don't hear anything else, listen to this point this morning. God is still capable of Mary and Elizabeth's stories. He's still capable today. Mary was too young. Elizabeth was too old. I, I, I was uh, one of the dear stories in our life in the all years of pastoral experience and I know Pastor Arnie's had some, Chad's had some. And the, uh, our, uh, one of the secretaries that was our church, admi administ administrative assistants, Rhonda Eddy, she, her husband was a, uh, he'd been an FBI agent and he'd been injured and so they're part of our church and she was just, uh, Rhonda was just a dear. But she came forward many times to ask for prayer to have a baby. She just couldn't get pregnant. And this went on for a few years, 10 years. And all of a sudden, she's in her, her lower 40s, mid, mid 40s, and guess what? Lo and behold, she gets pregnant. And her and Steve had a beautiful little girl that is the treasure of their life. God, God blessed them with a little child. And I think here in verse 36, this happened to Elizabeth. It, and I love it, in the midst of this whole story about the birth of Jesus, Luke, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, throws this one verse, verse 36. I love it. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. I got a question for you in this room. Maybe that's not your issue, 
but maybe you feel like there's something in your life that's barren. There's something with your work. There's something in your career. There's something with your children. There's something going on in your life that feels barren and fruitless. I want you to know that we serve a God. With God, all things are impossible. Maybe it's a financial situation in your life. Maybe it's a desire for a husband and wife or a wife. Maybe it's a new job. I don't know what it is, but it hasn't happened. God is the God of the impossible today. He has good surprises waiting for his people that love him and even those that don't. He's that kind of God. God can turn obstacles into opportunities. And look at verse 37. Here's the last phrase to underline this morning in your scripture. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Can we say this together right now? With God, nothing will be impossible. Let's say it with a little more authority. With God, nothing will be impossible. That's true. And I want to tell you, he's breathing that, some of you, in, into your spirit right now, into your life situation. Maybe you've been depressed this week, maybe you've been discouraged. Say, Pastor, I don't know where to turn in this situation. But I want to tell you, this, for with God, all things are possible in your situation, your circumstance. They're all different for all of us in this room and those listening online. Something new, a new beginning better than you anticipated. Ashish and Prathiba, they end up getting a place to live. They were almost homeless and they get, end up getting a place to live that was better than they could have asked or imagined. And I like what it says in Psalm 24, 20 verse four, the psalmist writes, may he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all of your purpose. Pieces of our heart, let there be an expectancy in our hearts because his angel is watching out for us and with God, nothing will be impossible. And I want to say this, that maybe he has some pregnancies coming your way. And guys, this is for you too. Oh, not the real kind. But maybe there's a dream or a plan or something that he wants to impregnate in you for the next season of your life. There's some place that was barren. There's some place that, that he wants to put in. And he wants to take that issue, that ache of your heart, whatever it is, and he wants to make new. He did, he did it for Elizabeth. He touched Mary's life, and he can do it for you. God has some good surprises waiting for you is another way to say that. I want to just end this story with where we started. We started with the, the character, Bible character, Caleb, in the book of Joshua and Numbers. And God had sent these 12 men to spy out the promised land, the promise that God has for all his people. 10 came back with a negative report saying, it's even though they carried fruit back and all oh, look at the fruit up there all that we see 10 came back with a negative report and says we can't do it but Caleb and Joshua came back with a report and there was something within Caleb he knew that he served a God of the impossible God had rained down manna. He'd fed them quail. He'd fed, fed them manna every day. He knew that God was the God of the impossible, that the God who had fed them is the God that could part the Jordan River. And he was the God that could take down the walls of Jericho even though it had not happened yet. He believed. The stuff that we see in the news that bothers us. All the bad news around us. Can I tell you, church, pieces of my heart. Let's have Caleb's heart and spirit. Let's believe that the things out there that God can make a way, that God can part the Jordan River, that God can bring down the walls of Jericho when we don't even see the battles in front of us. In your life, us as a church, God has great things ahead for us as a church because that's the God that we serve. So these three things, to mothers and all, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid. And with God, all things are possible. Let's stand together this morning. Hallelujah. Every head bowed and every head closed, no one looking around right now. Hallelujah. The 
You say, Pastor, with every head bowed and every head closed, nobody looking around, say, Pastor, how do I enter a relationship with this God that you're talking about? Maybe you came in with a family this morning and you stumbled into church, you're just here, and you had no intentions of, of having a relationship with God. But God miraculously sent Jesus through this young Mary so that he could be the Son of God, be Jesus, to save us from our sins and to live in us. And I wonder if you're in this room, you say, Pastor, I want to know the God that you're talking about. I need him in my life on a daily basis. I need a personal relationship. And you say, Pastor, I'm not sure that I have that, but before I leave this room, I want to know I have that relationship. You just raise your hand and say, Pastor Jerry, would you pray for me in a closing prayer? Just raise your hand right now and say, I need Jesus right now. I need Jesus. Just slip up your hand. Yes, over there, I see that. Over there. Is there others? You say, I need Jesus. Maybe you're online and you're watching and you, you need to surrender your life to Jesus. That scripture, that song we sang, I surrender all. That's all we need to do right now. Let's repeat these words after me, if you would, right now. Say these words. Dear Jesus, I come to you right now. I ask you to come into my life. Live in me. Be my Savior and friend. Thank you that you are with me. I don't need to be afraid. You can do the impossible in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a big hand for what he's doing in our lives. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I want you to know I love every one of you. I want you to go have a great Mother's Day. I want to get you out a little bit early today so you can have a great brunch or lunch or whatever you're going to do. I know we're having supper with my mom later and one of our daughters is going to swing into town from up north at a wedding, and we're looking forward. But moms, we love you. We treasure you. Come back next Sunday. We're going to have an awesome Sunday. You're going to hear the testimony of Vashon Johnson delivered from drug addiction. And uh, we're going to have a great Sunday with Chad speaking. So Lord bless you. Have an awesome afternoon.